I've been doing psychology in the broadest sense for a really long time. I started at the tail end of the 60s, catching the human potential movement, moving through mindfulness training, practices of different kinds, and then the formalities of developmental psychology, family system psychology, and clinical psychology. And most recently, a deep dive into research on the brain. One of the things I've observed down this long road is the ways in which people often trivialize or dismiss the fundamental process of growing and healing inside yourself as if it's some kind of upper middle class luxury, some sort of la-di-da thing. No, the harder a person's life, the more they're let down by the world around them, the more they've been mistreated, the more that they're carrying inside themselves the understandable impact of the experiences that they've had, the more important it is for that person to look inside themselves and in the world around them each day to grow strengths of various kinds, to cope with the past, cope with the present, and build a better life for the future. One of the most honorable, heroic even, and admirable things a person can do is to open up to their own experience, be strong and brave enough to bear what you find there, and then over time, gently encourage the inner territory of your own mind to grow more of the good there for your own sake and that of others. As we practice, in other words, as we engage a process of healing and learning and growth, basically we do it for two kinds of reasons. The first obvious reason is we do it for ourselves, to help ourselves become more effective and happier and wiser. That's a great reason. Additionally, we do it for the sake of others. We do it for the ways in which as we become more patient, or as I've learned personally, less of a jerk sometimes, um, that's actually wonderfully beneficial for other people. One of the most valuable ways that we can actually help other people is to raise our own level of being. And as we do that, the benefits kind of ripple out from us and touch everyone around ourselves. Uh, if it's hard to practice for yourself, if it just seems too selfish or self-indulgent, remember, kind of playing off of what the airlines say, that put your own oxygen mask on first, that as you fill your own cup up, as your own cup starts to runneth over, it benefits everyone else around you. The ways in which meditation or psychotherapy or gratitude practice, or simply keeping something good in mind, a minute or two, a breath or two at a time actually is profoundly transformative, especially with repetition over time. In fact, the research shows that mental training in the broadest sense has tremendous evidence behind it, and it's one of the most useful things you can do for yourself and along the way for other people.